So let me introduce Andre de Gouvier, who's from my own home department in physics and astronomy at Northwestern, and he's going to talk to you about neutrinos. Okay. Hi, my name is Andre, and uh, in one second, I'll talk about something completely different. <laughs> so, so my job is to tell you something about particle physics. Uh, you might know that Fermilab is a particle physics lab, so it stands to reason that somebody should talk about that. Let me remind you of what particle physics is about. Particle physics is about understanding what everything is made of. We've been thinking about this for a very, 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 very long time, and it looks like a good type of question to be asking, and the best thing that we've been able to come up with is that everything is made out of these things that we call particles. So the jobs of particle physicists are to find out what are all of these particles, uh, what do they do, and how they talk to one another. And the claim is that if you manage to do that, you explain absolutely everything. We haven't been able to do that, but we're having a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun in the meantime. This is where we are today. You must have seen uh, lots and lots of different tables of uh, fundamental particles before. This is actually what they look like. So uh, <laughs> I, I do have to say that these are also for purchase. And if you don't have a particle at home, you can go to this website and you can buy one. And you can buy your favorite particle. So all of the fundamental particles are here. They're ordered in a very particular way. Uh, this uh, good looking picture actually has a lot of information in it. And I'm not going to talk about any of that. <laughs> what I do want to concentrate on is in a subset of these particles, which are called neutrinos. So the neutrinos are these particles that live over here. And they're often referred to by the Greek letter nu. So if you see that written down somewhere, that's what the neutrinos are. So neutrinos are among the fundamental particles. They're kind of like the electron that everybody's very familiar with. They're kind of like the photon. And there's lots of them on me right now. Uh, and they're like uh, things like the quarks and the gluons and all these weird particles that you've heard about in the past. Neutrinos are also the particles that we understand the least. And they're also the ones that have done something in the very recent past that we were not expecting them to do, which is why I'm going to be talking about them. What we've discovered about neutrinos is that they had particles that we did not, they had properties that we did not anticipate. So we found this out about 20 years ago. And uh, my job in the next five minutes is to try to tell you what it is that we found out and why that's such a big deal. And the thing that we found out is that they have mass. And we found that out by a new phenomenon called neutrino oscillations. So I will try to explain what that means and how we found this out. And the first thing I need to tell you is that there are actually different types of neutrinos. And the different types are defined by how they are produced and how they're detected. And for the sake of this argument, I only need to talk about uh, two types of neutrinos. There's a third one, which is kind of like those two as well. So for example, there are a bunch of neutrinos that are produced in the sun. The sun is a gigantic neutrino factory. And there's also a lot of neutrinos that are produced in radioactive decay processes. All of those neutrinos are called electron neutrinos. And we know how they're produced. We also know how to detect them. There's a different kind of neutrino, which is produced when, for example, cosmic rays hit the atmosphere. When cosmic rays hit the atmosphere, they produce a bunch of particles called pions, which are called by this letter pi that we're very familiar with. And when those pions decay, they also produce a kind of neutrino. And of course, uh, we also do this in the laboratory, especially this laboratory in particular. We also produce a bunch of these pions. These pions decay, and we say that we produce a neutrino beam that way. And those are all muon neutrinos. So these are different types of particles that are produced and detected in different ways. If you don't believe me that they're different particles, we're very, very sure that this happened, because these people got the Nobel Prize in 1988 for proving that this is actually true. The electron neutrino and the muon neutrino are different particles. Uh, this is Leon Letterman that many of you may have seen before. He was a Fermilab director for a long time, and uh, he passed away uh, earlier this year. So their job was to show that the muon neutrino and the electron neutrino are different particles. So something funny happened, however, is that we found out that it's possible to produce a particular kind of neutrino. But if you wait long enough and you detect it, uh, it can behave as a different kind of neutrino. This is something that happened 20 years ago, and we're still working on this to figure out what it means. But we're very, very sure this happens, 
There's a long list of different types of experiments that have seen this phenomenon, and we're very, very sure that this happens. And what's really important about this is that this proves, or this only works if the neutrinos have mass, which is something that we didn't know before. So, the way this works, if my volunteers will rush in because they forgot, <laughs> is uh, I want to try to explain how, the, how this works very quickly. And the way this works is because of quantum mechanics. So the one thing you want to remember, which everybody has heard before, is that particles are waves. And because particles are waves, they, uh, they, they have this uh, wave-like behavior. And a good way of explaining a wave is to use a pendulum. So a particle that's propagating uh, can be represented by a pendulum. So for example, if this pendulum is oscillating back and forth, then the particle that's associated to this pendulum is, is oscillating, is swinging back and forth. That's the picture. So this is one particle. This is another one. And it does the same thing. And the only thing that's important is that the properties of the particles are encoded on how this thing swings back and forth. So we're saying now that the neutrinos have mass which means that the neutrinos are also things that look like this. So the question then becomes, I told you that there are two different kinds of neutrinos, the muon neutrinos and the electron neutrinos. So which one is which? And the answer turns out to be yes. <laughs> okay? What happens is that the electron neutrino and the muon neutrino are both of these things at the same time. So how do you tell them apart? You tell them apart in, by the way in which they oscillate, which has to do with the phase. So the idea is, you know, the, the electron neutrino might be something that oscillates like this, okay? And the muon neutrino is something that oscillates like that. And you can ask, what happens if something in the middle is going on? And in this case, that object that's doing something weird is sort of a mixture of the two, and it has some probability of being a muon neutrino and some probability of being an electron neutrino. So that's the picture. And how do the oscillations happen? The oscillation happens because these different pendulums have slightly different frequencies. So let's say that I turn it on in the electron neutrino mode, and it looks like that, and then we wait. We let some time go by. And what I mean by wait in the particle physics lab lingo means I produce my neutrino here at Fermilab, and then I build a detector in Minnesota. <laughs> and that's how much time you have to wait. But if you wait long enough, you see that they start to go out of phase. So what was born as a pure electron neutrino, all of a sudden now starts to have this uh, uh, component that's oscillating like that and not just oscillating like that. So if you keep following the pendulum, you see that it starts off like this. After some time, it'd be going back and forth like that. Then it'll be doing this again. So it's born as an electron neutrino, then it oscillates and it changes flavor from one to the other. Why is this very important? This is very important because our model, that pretty picture that I showed you before, makes a lot of predictions. It made one prediction, which is neutrino masses are zero, which means that our model is wrong. And what happens in physics is, when your model is proven to be wrong, you get very, very happy. <laughs> because that means you're learning something. You predicted something, and it turns out it's wrong. That's one thing that we learned. The other thing is that we also learned that neutrino masses are not zero, but they're very, very small. And let me try to just give you a sense of what that means by showing you this picture back again and by trying to map fundamental particles into uh, animals. And I'll try to map them into mammals. The heaviest particle is a top quark, which was discovered here at Fermilab. If the top quark were a mammal, it would probably be a blue whale. The blue whale is the the heaviest mammal that has ever existed. It's actually the heaviest animal that moves that has ever existed. So the top quark is a blue whale. The bottom quark, also discovered here at Fermilab, by the way, that's kind of like an elephant. It's a lot lighter than the top quark. And uh, something like the muon, which is one of my favorite particles, that's kind of like a tiger. And of course, the, uh, the electron uh, is like a rabbit. So we've discovered that neutrino masses are not zero. So what do neutrinos look like? They look like this. These are not big flies. These are fruit flies. The heaviest neutrino is probably not heavier than a fruit fly in this scale. So we think neutrinos are very, very weird because they're not even mammal. <laughs> okay? Now, this is very important because we don't know how these masses happen. 
and we also think that they mean something very important. And because my time is up, I want to remind you that we're still doing a lot of neutrino experiments. Fermilab now has all of these different neutrino experiments going on for us to try to understand what's happening. Thank you. OK, everyone. So particle physics melts your brain, right? So, and it's happening right here in your own backyard, and you didn't even know it. So, OK, so Andre de Gouvier, everyone. So.